Hey everybody, it's ASIC Eric, and today's hopefully the big day. Start the car. Um, still waiting for Pops. He'll be here in a few minutes. Um, I'll go over some of the stuff I did um, during the week while I was waiting for Pops. Um, we wrapped up the wiring back here on the fuel pump. Let me show you what we did. So we have one of these. Oh, these are called weather packs, but similar kind of thing, right? So ran that. Up in here with a little grommet in the side there. Up into here. And it goes back here. So this is for the fuel pump. So that runs up inside the car there. Um, here's the fuel sender. Um, this was cool. The painless harness came with some of these little connectors, which is great. So it just connects directly. This is the one that was on the painless harness, so we were able to put that kind of connector on there, which is nice. Um, I'm not sure where the ground goes. I can't find my painless manual. I'm going to dig it up. So I just stuck it right here for now, but ground goes here somewhere. Uh, stuck the battery in the trunk. Um, it's just sitting here for right now. Got these big kicker connectors on there. Uh, and then tested the fuel pump. Fuel pump works. Uh, tested the starter. Starter works. What I did for that. Um, <laughs> is the neutral safety switch is right here and it goes directly to the starter on one side so i just basically look for which side of this had some resistance to ground which was this side and i just connected that straight to my little test jig here um, this could well it just fell out it's not in there very tight so i'm gonna fix that this is not very beefy wire this is only 18 gauge um, hopefully that's enough for the juice for the solenoid I mean, it was okay for the little test uh, but i got to keep an eye on that, make sure that doesn't get hot. Um, i will find that again. I think it was the non-striped wire, but we'll go back and look. Uh, so, tested these two guys. These are working. This box is working again. Um, for this. Hey, it's Pops. Um, we talked about in the last video that uh, this thing wasn't working properly, and it was. There's two grounds at the very back of the harness that I just accidentally found when I was poking around in here recently. Oh, so right back here somewhere at the back. You can't see them, but they're right there. There they are. So those weren't connected. Um, so that's fixed. Yeah, so I think all that's good to go. So we're ready to do some stuff here today. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Bush Gardens. One or two major milestones in our work. Cranking up the engine today, and the next one is driving that baby out fully stored. Exactly. Yeah. Are you stoked? Damn right. You even got to crank up your shirt on today. I got a, <laughs> a, I got a shirt on today. Isn't that a prison shirt? Something. You fail. <laughs> so, made, <laughs> oh, a, no. made a checklist. Um, there's a couple things scratched off there, as you can see. Test fuel pump, test starter. We got to do all the other stuff. Uh, so, we'll go over this real quick just to let you know what we're up to. So, Get the wheels off the ground, so if we end up in gear or something, we don't drive off. Uh, transmission in neutral. Check the engine manifold bolts, because I think those are loose. Um, then we got to make sure all the wiring is clear, because I know there's stuff still laying up against um, exhaust manifolds and things. Clean up the oil under the car, so we don't get a fire under there. That's it. I'm going home. Well, you get to stand around for most of this. Yeah, hey. Um, we're going to connect our little, little man uh, what's it called? Mechanical oil pressure gauge. Um, and then we'll spin the engine over, make sure we got oil pressure. Hopefully we see the oil come up to the rockers and then we have extra oil to add in there. Um, and then on the fuel system, uh, I put this connector on here. I, I asked about this a couple weeks ago. Nobody commented on this, but this thing's, sorry, seems awful flimsy to me. So I got one of the ones that has the mechanical lock on it. So we're going to replace that. Um, and then we're going to purge the fuel lines. Uh, so we'll put gas in the tank and then what we're going to do is take the gas can and put the hose in it. Hopefully that'll fit inside the can there um, and then run the fuel pump all the way through. So if there's anything in the lines, it'll end up in the gas can instead of in my injectors. Um, and then after that, then we'll connect the fuel line up pressurize it, make sure there's no leaks, start. So that's a list. And if we think of anything else along the way, we'll add it to the list, but that should be it. So let's get busy. 
All right, we haven't been filming much because just a bunch of tidying up and stuff, but we got uh, the mechanical oil pressure line sent uh, connected to the side of the block there, that oil pressure galley thing. I'm going to show you where that goes in a second here. All right, so we brought that line here, kind of wrapped it around the suspension in here to keep it away from the exhaust manifolds and stuff. That goes into our little test box there so we can see the oil pressure from there. Um, as a reminder, we don't have all the rest of the painless harness hooked up right now. We don't have the instrument cluster, so I can't measure the oil pressure any other way. So we just threw that guy in there. Uh, so how's our checklist doing? Everything's done now except for the added fluids together. No, now we have to check the rockers for yeah. oil. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to crank the engine over now. Um, it's got, a, I think, five quarts of oil in it. So there's oil in the bottom of the dipstick, but it's not in the right place yet. Um, so we're going to look in the rockers here, crank the engine over, look in there, and hopefully see some oil coming up in there. Also watch the oil pressure gauge. Hopefully we see some oil pressure. And we'll do it a little bit at a time, start like, you know, five seconds at a time or something. The E-Rod manual says 10 seconds, crank, wait 30 seconds, 10 seconds, crank, etc. So we'll start at five. Um, and we'll go from there. And then I'll show you this pops gets out of my way. Um, on the wiring, what we did. And we still have a lot of cleanup work to do here, but we just kind of put some of these clamps on here to get these guys up and tidy. Um, this big mess on top here and then we made sure everything's clear back down in there everything's away from the manifolds got under the car checked everything it all looks good so we're ready to do this huh yes we are okay all right we're gonna connect the battery hopefully nothing sparks too egregiously the light come on can't say anything sure did oh on the instrument button yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Take pictures. Okay. Are we in neutral? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Nothing yet. I didn't see anything here either. So let that sit for a second. Come back. Are right, you ready? Yeah. Metal to me. All right, one more time. Nothing yet. Oh, it's getting a bit concerning now. Did a couple more cranks off camera there, so. All right, go for it. Wait, wait, wait move your arm. You're blocking the camera here. There you go. Let's see if we get pressure this time. see oil in that line it's making its way up there so it is it's moving it hasn't shown up on the gauge yet but I don't see anything up here either and uh, said I can see oil coming up this hose here so there's definitely oil pressure it's just not showing up on the gauge yet Cool guy? Yep. Wait, did I turn this off? No, it's running. Okay, go for it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, we got a little pressure that time. What do we got? 20, 25 PSI? Yeah. We got oil. How's it in the rockers yet? Wait 30 seconds, do it again. All right, we have oil pressure. Hopefully that gauge is just reading low. Yeah, how high do you want to go to, 60? I don't really know what these things are supposed to run at. I would have guessed around 40 or 50, but. Well, I'd arrest the person who built that box for one thing. <laughs> I don't like it, huh? All right, let's do it. I love it, I love it. Oh, your arm's in the way. Okay. Well, 
keeps moving. We're stopping it before, you know. So we're looking down in here and we're not really seeing any oil, but I can smell oil and we definitely have oil pressure. So I think we're gonna count that as good enough. Um, Pop says we're seeing about 30 PSI. Um, he says it's still moving though. So these gauges move really slow. So that, that may be all we're gonna see on there, but all right, we're ready to do the fuel system flush now. All right, this is a momentous occasion. Are you ready? Yeah. Do it. Right. What? It doesn't work. Press the green button, maybe? No. Is it going? Is it doing anything? No. All right, we've got mechanical problems here. You know how easy this is going to be. I smell gas. Yeah, it's going in. Yeah. You have to figure out a way to turn this around. I know. Well, I can be able to get it all the way up in there. Do the best we can. Doesn't yeah. have to, doesn't have to be full. All right. So what we're going to attempt to do here is take the hose that would be going to the inlet there, put it back in the tank, and then Pops is gonna turn on the fuel pump and hopefully pump any chunks or anything that are in the lines into the tank instead. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So now this time you're pressing the fuel button, not the start button. Correct. Oh, and that right. one is a, that one's a push on, push off. Yeah. Don't do it until I tell you. If I, if I yell, that means turn it off. Okay. Okay. Hit it. Just leave it on though. Yeah, well just just tap it real quick. I just want to see what it does. Nothing. Alright, stop. That did nothing. Okay, we're not entirely sure the fuel system's working right. It, it made, we weren't able to purge it, but once we connected the fuel line, it made a different noise. So maybe it has to be sealed as Pops was thinking. Um, so we got Mrs. Asik Eric behind us here. Hello. She's staying off camera, but we're gonna push the button and see what happens. Pops is watching for leaks. It's gonna run about five seconds, stop. What's it gonna do, kind of All right, you ready? Yeah. For a minute. No leaks though? No. Nope. Not here, I know. It's clear underneath. Okay. Here we go. Put more gas in it and the pump sounds a little different now so we're hoping that that's the trick you can hear when I turn it on now listen all right ready yeah
Stink. All right, so just pulled up the codes on it, and uh, the only code I see is position crankshaft position system variation not learned. Uh, that's one of the things they say when you buy the engine, you have to take it into the dealer to get them to do that. So that needs to be done. It says MLI, sorry, malfunction indicator lamp status is on. Yes, we know you can. Maybe you can see the light over there in the little box. The little red lights on. But that's it. I don't see anything else. So uh, we put an extra quart of oil in it, topped off the um, coolant. Oh, Thank you. Um, and is it ready to try it again? Yeah. Don't get enough of this. So I uh, let what you guys think. Um, Pops and I are a little concerned about that kind of high-pitched whine that we hear. Um, hopefully that's nothing. Um, never, like I said, we never, don't have anything to compare it to. We've never run this thing before. But I don't really like that little whiny sound it makes. Um, okay. Um, ready? the top end being out of oil. Uh, so the engine's up at uh, about 130. off here for now all right so we were hearing a little bit of a crunchy noise coming from down here and we checked the power steering fluid and it had pumped all the fluid out so it was running dry and we filled it up but it's making some awful noises now so we may have killed it um, and the other thing is the thermostat never opened up it got up to like almost 200 degrees um, and then that started happening, so we turned it off. So I don't know if the thermostat would have ever opened or not. 
Um, that the lower coolant hose was just like 70 degrees, so it just never opened up. But maybe it would have been okay if we let it run a little bit longer. Anyway, we're going to shut it off here, but. Sound of the exhaust back here. It's rattling around back there, but anywho, uh, that's it. What do you think, Pops? Got anything to say? No, sir. I think we did an outstanding job. That's it? That's all you got to say after seven no, years? this is milestone number one. We have the second one when all the stuff is done. The interior, the doors, the glass, dashboard. But this this was the biggest milestone. That's just fluffing on the cake work that we haven't done. I had to edit Pops out there because he said something inappropriate. So, well, um, so unfortunately, I think I may have killed this guy. Um, and it's not an easy thing to fix, unfortunately. Um, cause that steering pulley's pressed on there and all this crap and pff, it's going to suck if I have to replace that, but it's definitely not making sounds that I like. Um, anyway, uh, that's going to do it. Um, we're both happy. Pops is happy. I'm happy. Uh, and a comment on your thermostat ever opening up. Yeah. And what, uh, what everybody thinks. I would have thought it would have opened at 180, but you know, we're measuring 180 on the temp sensor here and who knows what it is actually on the thermostat. You know, maybe it's not. And your temporary oil line leaks a little bit in the yeah, that, connector there. Yeah, that line's leaking so on probably the So probably a low so. pressure of 40 instead of 60 up there. Yeah. So that's going to go away once we hook up the instrument cluster and stuff. So we'll probably let this sit now that we know, know it works. And we'll go to work on putting the cluster and everything in here so we can do this properly. But uh, let me know what you think, guys and gals. Um, momentous day. We're happy. Thanks.